So Steam Next Fest was last week. If you don't know what Steam Next Fest is, it's a week-long Steam event where hundreds of indie game demos are promoted as well as developer live streams. And since this is my first time developing a game, I've never taken part in Next Fest, so I thought I would share how my experience went and how it affected my game. And if you're new here, I'm working on Penumbra Tower. It's a grid movement roguelike where you play as this little frog guy going through these randomly generated rooms while fighting enemies, bosses, collecting items, and doing other stuff. But before I get into it, I have big news. If you've already seen the community post, you probably already know what I'm talking about. There is now a greetable Discord server, so if you want to come and hang out, maybe see what I have planned for the game ahead of time, and maybe even get to participate in some closed playtests, join the Discord. So to start things off, it didn't go as well as I was hoping it would. I think there were a lot of things that factor into why Penumbra Tower didn't do that well, pretty much all of them being my fault in some way, but it is what it is. So before I get started, I'm extremely grateful to everyone who has been following me on this development journey. It means a lot, and even though Nextfest didn't go as well as I hoped, I'm still very motivated to continue working and improving the game. And if you are a new game developer thinking of including your game in an upcoming Nextfest, maybe you can learn something from the mistakes that I made. So right off the bat, I think I shot myself in the foot with wishlists. They say that how your game is performing a couple weeks prior to the event dictates how much it will be pushed during the event. And let's just say Penumbra Tower didn't have a lot of wishlists before the event started. On February 4th, Penumbra Tower had just under 400 wishlists. And based on what I've heard from other developers, I was hoping that this number would at least double over the course of the event. I ended Nextfest with a total of around 620 wishlists, so I don't know, maybe I was just huffing copium or something. But I do think that the lower amount of interest prior to the event did affect the overall performance during Nextfest. I think if you want a game to perform well during the event, it has to already be doing relatively well ahead of time. The healthier the interest is in a game leading up to Nextfest definitely amplifies its performance during the event. So because this was my first Next Fest, there were some nuances that I wasn't aware of going into it that probably would have been good for me to have known ahead of time. I did my first developer livestream on February 5th, which was the first day of the event. I don't think there was anything wrong with taking a time slot on the first day. There are upsides and downsides to doing this. On one hand, there are more eyes watching at the start of the event, but this also means more competition at the same time because every other developer is also thinking the same thing. My stream was sitting around 100 concurrent viewers, which I was happy with at the time, although I know in the grand scheme of things this is on the lower end of Nextfest streams. But where I messed up was after 4 hours I got a little tired and decided to end my stream. This is something that apparently you shouldn't do. You should record the stream from the beginning and then when you're done, instead of ending the stream, you should set the recording to loop and leave the stream running. But I learned. During the second stream on Friday that I did, I recorded the live stream and let the recording loop for around 10 hours. I think it peaked at around 500 viewers during the beginning, although something weird was going on with the streams being broken up into multiple segments in the broadcast app for some reason. So this wasn't too bad in my opinion, although I think messing up the first day did cost me slightly over the duration of the event. The meta definitely seemed like you should let a recorded stream loop until your next time slot, which could be multiple days. I definitely saw some other larger games running their stream for an upwards of 80 hours before ending it. The next point is somewhat outside of Nextfest, and more so has to do with my game directly. Penumbra Tower is having a bit of an identity crisis. What is Penumbra Tower? Is it a strategy game? Well, not really. It kind of is, I guess, but you're not really managing multiple units and there really isn't too much to think about while you're playing, so I hesitate to call it that. But it is kind of a turn-based game, which is a subcategory of a strategy game, but I also wouldn't really call it a true turn-based game either. So let's take a look here at the Nextfest genre categories. Out of all the categories listed here on the event page, Penumbra Tower barely fits into one subcategory being a tactical turn-based game, which really limits its visibility on the Nextfest page. On top of the fact that it's being included with a bunch of other games that aren't necessarily that similar to it, which wasn't even something that I had considered before the event. I've always been referring to it as a grid-based movement roguelike, which really isn't a genre I suppose, but it's the closest thing I can think of for this build of the game. So yeah, this has really got me reevaluating what my game is, both gameplay-wise and thematically. I also think I released the demo too early. 
I've heard developers say, wait to enter Steam Next Fest and wait to release your demo until you have a solid build ready. And I thought that the current version of the demo for Penumbra Tower was pretty solid. There was a full gameplay loop and there was practically no bugs in the demo. But now looking back on it, I would go even a step farther than that. From what I've seen from other games in Next Fest, what waiting really means is your game should essentially be done at this point. If you take a look at the top performing games in NextFest, a lot of these are set to release a month from now. Some of them are releasing even sooner than that. And I think that's because in doing this, you're able to demo an extremely polished version of the game while also using the demo's public engagement to keep the game fresh in players' minds for the approaching release. And my game is definitely not polished to that extent and not releasing anytime soon. I hesitantly say it'll be ready by the end of the year, but that's an extremely optimistic release date. So what am I going to do now? Although my game didn't get as many wishlists as I would have liked, I still think taking part in NextFest was worthwhile. If anything, it's given me a direction to move in at least. And I've got a ton of updates planned, and a lot of work ahead of me. I'll cover these updates more in future devlogs, but to keep it brief, the game will still use a grid-based movement, but it will be incorporating more traditional roguelike elements while moving away from the more tactical features. I've also been thinking a lot about adding controller support to the game, and I probably will. But the only problem with this is, if I plan to add controller support and I update the Steam page to reflect that, does it matter that the demo is only using mouse and keyboard? What do you guys think? I actually don't know, I'm unsure about the logistics of this because it will be coming out, but the demo won't reflect that. And thanks again to everyone who gave the demo a try over the last couple weeks. I've gotten a bunch of feedback through the feedback form. Most of it was surprisingly positive. The only primary issue seems to be the sound design right now, which makes sense since most of the sound effects were just pulled from a pack. Also consider adding Penumbra Tower to your wishlist. I know I just spent a whole video talking about wishlists and the current state of the game and how it's performing on Steam, but